Let's go to the word. And so um, we will start our new theme for this month, December. And what is our theme for this month? Peace on earth, not this peace, okay? That's the hippie kind of peace, 1960s. But um, one of the good news that the angel announced at the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ was that they said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men to whom his favor rests or for those who will accept his Grace. So throughout this month, um, we're going to explore the promise of peace and how does it work. Because peace is very important. John 14, 27, Jesus said, wow, that's, that's a small. John 14, 27, let, let me read from my Bible. Okay, there it is. Peace, I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So just keep your Bible open on John chapter 14 because we're going to read some more verses. Yeah, but right now, let us, let us pray. Father God, we are so grateful, O Lord, as we are now in this season of celebration again. To remember your birth. And Father God, I know that you came into this world to deliver us from our sins. But you did not just come to deliver us from our sins, but Lord, you came so that we will have peace. And so I pray, O oh God, that you will just allow us, O oh Lord, to enjoy your peace as you have promised. In Jesus' name. Amen. I have watched a video, and probably some of you have watched this video on Facebook about this little girl that was screaming at the airport because she didn't want her dad to leave. Did you see that? This was in the Philippines. No, the, the dad works on... Uh, I said, OFW, if you, know, if you do not know what is OFW, Overseas Filipino Workers. And so um, the girl was screaming, and she, she was saying, like, you don't love me. Please, you don't love me. Don't leave me. And, you know, she was screaming. And so um, he had a, what you call the separation anxiety, you know, because uh, she's a little girl, she was afraid of what's, uh, what's going to happen, her dad is not going to be home, her dad is going to be away, and she said that her dad was her best friend, and so it was so hard for her to let, her, to let him go. And so, here in John chapter 14, um, Jesus, uh, together with his disciples, he spent time with his disciples, Knowing that he will face the cross the next day, he started saying his goodbye to his disciples. In chapter 13, um, verse 33, he said to his disciples, I will be with you only a little longer. Where I am going, you cannot come. And so he was already saying his goodbyes. You know, I'm not going to be here for long. I'm going to be, to, to be away. And where I'm going, you cannot come. So let's look at the response of some of the disciples. Peter, chapter 13, verse 36 says, Lord, where are you going? Okay. That's what Peter said. Lord, where are you going? Can I come? I will lay down my life for you. So they began to have this anxiety of separation. And Thomas, chapter 14, verse 5 said, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? In other words, we want to go with you, but you haven't told us how to get there. 
Philip responded with these words. He said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And so, like the little girl that was in that video, the disciples have also experienced a separation or anxiety or fear of the unknown. Because the disciples have spent their three years with this, with this man uh, they called Master. They called Lord. Three years. They left everything. They left their family. They left their work to spend time with him. And now he was leaving them without even telling them where he was going. So fear gripped their hearts. They were troubled and afraid. And they, in their mind, they have this question, what now? What will happen? So one of the biggest things fear can do to us is it robs us of our peace when we fear. When peace is absent, anything can go wrong because you, do not, you cannot think um, right. Okay? The decisions that we make can, be go, can go wrong. The directions that we take can be wrong. It can lead us into all kinds of uh, even health issues. But Jesus had a plan. He did not just say that he was going away. He had a plan. Okay? Tell that person next to you, Jesus has a plan for you. Amen. In verse 18, Jesus said, I will never leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And in verse 27, he said, Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So Jesus is saying, do not be afraid. I have a plan for you. I will leave you my peace. Not the kind of peace that the world Give. So the peace that Jesus gave is not the kind of peace that the world gives because the world can never give us true peace. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of kind of peace treaties and peace agreements, but the world can never give us true peace. So let's uh, compare the peace that the world gives and the, the peace that Jesus gives because he said, my peace is not the kind of peace that the world gives. So the world's peace, uh, here's, here's one. Is peace by treaty. For nations to have peace, they will sign a treaty or agreement, but it's always shaky. Like the Americans have a peace treaty with the Russians, and the Russians have peace treaty with the uh, you know, Indians and all that, and the Chinese. And, but that kind of peace is very shaky because one of the signatories can just pull out any time. And it doesn't even have to be a signatory. Somebody could just go crazy and, you know, drive us uh, into war. Like, uh, what's his name? The North Korean, Kim Jong-un, the one with a nice haircut. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no, there's no really uh, true peace. Because right now, you know, we're watching the North Koreans. They're always firing their missiles and... Um, you know, the America said, uh, Trump said, uh, we'll, we'll take care of you. But um, you know what I, what I really believe is that uh, I was listening to uh, a um, radio show. Because I, I love to listen to documentaries and radio shows and some experts. They said the CIA could kill him anytime through satellite. It's... Uh, it's a, they call it sonic attack. If they can get his DNA, they could kill him anytime. They just put a satellite over North Korea. Okay. So that's how, that's how dangerous the, the arms uh, that we have right now. And so there's no peace. Okay. There's no peace. And here's another kind of peace that uh, the world also gives. There's a saying that goes, peace through strength. If you arm, if you if you arm yourself enough, nobody is going to bother you. You know, like people that uh, they will they like to arm themselves so that you know they the bad people cannot go into their house. But you know, all it takes is somebody who is crazy, like the one in Las Vegas, 
and there's no peace. And the other peace that the world also gives is peace by medication. Right? Many people who do not have peace, what they will do? You will go to the doctor. Okay? And after a short evaluation, the doctor asks, like, what's wrong with you? And he said, I can't sleep or you're crazy. So I will give you a medication and take two of this and call me in the morning. But that kind of peace is not also true because once the medication wears out, you're back and you cannot be, have peace. And so these all kinds of peace the world offers. There are all kinds of peace that the world offers. But let's look at what the peace that Jesus promised. In chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus opened up with his words. He said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Okay, so again, do not forget that at this, at, this, uh, at this point, at this time, the disciples were very worried now because Jesus was saying goodbye to them. So they were very worried. So Jesus opened up with his words in chapter 14, verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. True peace is not found in medication nor by arming ourselves, but true peace can be found in trusting God because peace is not just a condition of the mind, it is more of a condition of the heart. And nobody knows our hearts better than God himself. That's why true peace cannot be, you know, cannot be achieved by just medication. Listen to what Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all all comprehension will guard your hearts and with your minds in Christ Jesus. In other words, Paul is saying, do not let your fear rob you of your peace. Instead, whatever it is that is bothering you, bring it to God and the peace of God that is beyond comprehension. In other words, this kind of peace that God is something that beyond our understanding. Beyond human comprehension, that is the peace that God gives us is so deep, it is, it is bottomless, it will, guide you, it will guide not only our mind, but it also guide our hearts. God's peace to Jesus Christ is deep. That's why it is, his, Paul said it is beyond comprehension. And so, true peace is that comes from God to Christ Jesus. So whenever we, there is something that is bothering us, there is something that is uh, rubbing us with our peace, first thing we need to do is take it to the Lord himself. Do not go to the doctor right away. Do not, do, you know, do not arm yourselves or whatever you need to do. Go to God first because this, this peace that we have in God, and it is an agreement, it is a treaty that we have in God, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this agreement is not written, this peace agreement is not written by ink on paper. It is written by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. This is the kind of peace. See, Jesus said this new covenant, this new agreement, this, this very treaty in my blood, that's why it is beyond comprehension because Jesus already paid for that peace. It is beyond comprehension. So in other words, this, this peace that we have in God is something that is so deep that will make you fall asleep very quick and sleep really good. Sleep very well. Don't, don't you like that? Have you, have you have some times that, you know, when you, when you go to sleep, you, you don't remember what's, what happened? And, you know, when, while you're sleeping, you just, just like you, you died, but you wake up. That's the kind of peace that comes only from God. It's beyond understanding. And this peace cannot be broken by man. This, is, this peace, you know, 
unlike the peace treaties that people sign, you know, one signatory can, can pull out and break it. But this kind of peace that we have with God, that is in a, we have an agreement with God, is something that cannot be broken by man. You know why? Let me tell you why. Because this peace, when God, when the Lord Jesus signed this peace with his blood on the cross, it was only him, you were not there. It was only him that signed that peace treaty. You were not there. Let, let, me, um, let me show you something in Genesis chapter 15. Okay, because when, this is the time when God signed an, or have an agreement or covenant with, with Abraham. This is something that um, really will tell us the truth how, how God signed an agreement. Okay? Right. This is God, chapter 15. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not afraid. I am your shield. Now, remember this. He said, do not be afraid. Okay? Because, again, fear can come and rob us with our peace. Your very great reward. So, but Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And one of the inherit my estate is Elisha Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me children. And we go, let's go to verse 4. Okay. Uh, no, let's jump to verse 9. Okay. This is something very interesting. So the Lord said to him, bring me a hyper, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all this to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite to each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep and a thick, dreadful said to him, know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in the country. Let's jump to 17. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On the day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said, to your descendants I give this land. And so this is the record of God that made covenant with Abraham. Okay, because my, my point here is that I'm, I'm trying to point out to you that the peace treaty, okay, the peace treaty we have with God was that it's unbreakable because when the Lord Jesus signed that treaty by his blood, he was on the cross by himself. Again, we find our peace in the Lord Jesus Christ because he gave himself for us. Isaiah said that he was punished for our peace. Okay, now let's go back to Abraham because the, uh, I want to I wanna point out something here. Okay, so when, when God said, I will make covenant with you, he told Abraham, bring me a hyper, a goat, and a bird. And in the olden days, when people make a treaty, peace treaty or covenant, they will have, they will kill goats or animals and they will, they will put it in, they'll cut it into half. One half is on this side and the other half is on this side. Okay, but Alex, can you come? I, I just do want to give an illustration. All right, so just, just, just want to show. Okay, so this, just imagine there's a meat here, there's a meat here. In the, in, the, in the olden days, okay, if we're making treaty between us and agreement, we will lock arms, okay, and we will walk through back and forth, and that's the sign of the, the treaty. Sir, thank you. So what's the treaty? Us? Us? With us? Yeah, we're going to us. <laughs> okay. So... That's, that seals the treaty, okay? God said, I will make covenant with you. 
Do not be afraid. This will give you peace. Do not be afraid. So they locked arms and do that. But if you if you read there, what did Abraham saw? There was a smoking what? Fire pot. The smoking fire pot went back and forth between the carcass of the animal. The smoking fire pot represents God himself. Abraham was not there. He was sleeping. This is how God made covenant with Abraham. He did it by himself. And for us, our covenant, the new covenant that Jesus is talking about, he said, this new covenant in my blood, Isaiah said that he was punished for our peace so that our peace will come and that we will have a true peace. So when God made this new covenant with us for us to have peace in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, guess who was hanging on the cross? Guess. Who was hanging on the cross to pay for your peace? Jesus, where were you? Sleeping. That is why I said this is a true peace because this peace cannot be broken by men. You can reject it, but you cannot break it. That's why this peace is very strong. This is what, this is again what Jesus said. Do not be afraid. Do not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Whenever you do not have peace, whenever you find yourself in trouble, always take it to God first. Always take it to God. Do not take it somewhere else. Do not find peace in arming yourselves. Do not find peace in going to the doctor. I'm not, I'm not putting doctors down, okay? But we should, because we know whatever the doctors give you medication for your peace is not a true peace. True peace can be found only in Christ himself. Peace that is beyond understanding. Peace that is, you know, beyond our comprehension. So you want a true peace? Take it to God. Take it to God. Whatever your problem is, whatever is bothering you, take it to God himself and nowhere else. What else? What else did uh, Jesus said here? Second one. This kind of peace, he said. If you go back to verse 18, chapter, let's go back to John chapter 14, verse 18. There's something that Jesus said here. Okay? All right. Verse, verse 18. 14, 18. He said, I cannot see. I can see. I hear he said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before, the, before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, I live you as you will live. You will also live. Okay? Now, Jesus said here, okay, again, he was, he was telling the disciples, do not be afraid even though I leave you. Do not be afraid, but have peace. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Now, what are, what are orphans? Orphans are children without parents, or they have been abandoned by their, by their parents, or maybe by death, or something else. Some years ago, we, were, uh, we went to... Uh, Tijuana, Mexico. How many have been to, to Tijuana? Or Tijuana. Tijuana, Mexico. And we went to the orphanage and um, 
there were a lot of kids there, you know. And one one thing I can remember is they were they were praying in in Spanish and they 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 closed the prayer in uh, el nombre el nombre de Padre del Hijo del Espíritu Santo. I can I cannot forget that. But you know, uh, there are a lot of kids there. But you have to be careful when you visit orphanages. You know why? Because these kids, they have so much fear in their hearts. And when we were about to leave, they hang on to us. They didn't want to stay there. They wanted us to take them home. I mean, they're so scared. And so Jesus is saying here, I will not leave you as orphans, but he said, I will not abandon you, but I will come to you. Now, what does that mean? You see, when you try to have peace, you go to the doctor, go to medication. You are the one who will have to go to the doctor, right? And so when you go visit the doctor, and you will come, and the doctor will ask you, what's wrong with you now? Right? Then you will tell them, you know, uh, what's wrong with you, and the doctor will say, you're, you're, you're crazy. And he will write you a prescription and say, take this to the pharmacy. Get your medication. And he will give you a few instructions and send you home. And your peace, you see, you went to the doctor because you want help from the doctor. But the peace that the doctor knows he will prescribe to you is the medication. Your peace will depend whether your medication works. Right? And most of the time, again, it works for a while, and then it wears out. But our human nature, okay, when we are in trouble, when you are, when you do not have peace, What we are looking for is always going to be somebody that will comfort you. Not medication. You know where I'm going with this? Okay, let me let me let me repeat that. When you try to find peace. You go to the doctor, and you will trust the doctor. But the doctor will prescribe you with medication. In other words, the doctor is not the one who is comforting you, but he is, he, he is trying to depend or to give you your peace through medication. But our human nature, the way God has created us, when we try to find peace, it will not always be on the things that we can have or medication. We will try to find peace on somebody that we can trust. Is that right? Okay. Yes, just like the just like the orphans in in um, the orphanage, they look for somebody to love them. I'm pretty sure that the the orphanage, the people in the orphanage, so you know, work so hard to make sure that they, they are loved. But they're looking for somebody to love them. They're always looking for somebody to comfort them. 
But the difference with the peace that Jesus offered to us is that he will not abandon us. And he said, I will come to you. This is something that is very personal. This is not, Jesus is not prescribing anything but his peace, that the peace that he offers is something that is personal because he created us, he knows what we need for peace. We need somebody. It is not, he is not prescribing us anything. You know, it's not like give you an instructions and prescription and said, here, hope, I'm hoping that this medication will work. But Jesus said, I will not abandon you. I will come to you. But there's something seems not right what Jesus said. Here. Because at this point, Jesus was already saying his goodbyes. And he even told them, where I go, you cannot come. And yet he said, I will not abandon you. That's confusing. And he said, I will come to you. That's double confusing. Okay, let, me, let me repeat that so that you'll get it. Jesus at this time was saying his goodbyes, and that's why the disciples were so anxious. The disciples were so fearful. You know, they didn't have peace, but Jesus said, peace, I live with you. Peace, I give to you. And then he said, I am not going to abandon you. So because Jesus knew that, again, true peace comes from a different, from another person, when there is somebody that will comfort you. And he said, I will come to you. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? He said, I'm going away. You cannot come where I'm going, where I'm going, but I will have you will have peace. How do you have peace? I will I will not abandon you. And he just said he's going away. And he said, I will come to you. How does that work? Because this is very important. We, we, we need to find out what this is, okay? Because Jesus said, I will come to you. So you're probably like, well, then how am I supposed to have true peace if Jesus is not gonna, he's, he's going away? How can he come? How can he say, I will not abandon you? How can we have true peace? Well, if you read it very carefully, he's talking about who? The Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. That's why he called him the Comforter. The Holy Spirit is there. And Jesus said, he will be with you and he will be in you. Amen. It is the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus will come in the person of the Holy Spirit. And this is something that you and I need to understand. How much of the Holy Spirit do you allow to give you comfort? See, most Christians, most Christians heard of the Holy Spirit to where? Throughout. The Bible. Right? The Bible tells us that there is the Holy Spirit. It's Acts chapter 19. By the way, that's the homework, okay? If you were not here last Thursday, that's a homework. That's your assignment. So make sure you read it. Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 19. That's your assignment. So if you were not here last Thursday, that's your assignment. Paul encountered this believers. And he said, have you received the Holy Spirit? And this believer said, 
What Holy Spirit? <laughs> well, that's, this is something that is very important because most Christians heard of the Holy Spirit through preaching, teaching, and reading the Bible. So in Acts chapter 19, Paul said, have you heard, have you received the Holy Spirit? They said, what Holy Spirit? We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Now this is something that is even very important in connection with the peace that Jesus promised. And he said, I will not abandon you, I will come to you. Because see, Jesus comes in the person of the Holy Spirit. How do you know? Because Jesus said, He will be with you and will live in you. How do you know that the Holy Spirit is in you? Well, if you do not know, then how will you have peace? <laughs> if you do not know, then how will you have peace? Because my question is, how much of the Holy Spirit you allow to give you peace? How, how, that's why I ask, how do you know that the Holy Spirit is in you? Well, there's, there's a lot of... Uh, Okay, the fruits is one of them. If the Holy Spirit is a person, because he is a person, right? It's third person in the Trinity is a person, then you must have experience with him. He is not just an instruction that changed your life. He is a person. He is a person that you must experience. This is why a lot of times when when people say you know, how the Holy Spirit works. I'm like, ah, you know, I don't believe in that thing about the Holy Spirit. Most of the time, I don't listen to those people because they themselves did not experience the Holy Spirit. Until you experience the Holy Spirit, you cannot say something about Him. And He is part of our life. But we must be aware that he is part of your life. You must experience him. Because through peace, Jesus said, he will give you instruction. He is the comforter and he is even the counselor. He will guide you. He will remind you of the things that Jesus has taught you. Jesus said. So peace, again, first of all, is that you must trust God for your peace. Do not trust anything else. Some, sometimes people think that they will have peace when they have more money. That's not true. You will have more problem when you have money. Right? The more money you have, the more problem you have. Many of us would say, I wish I was rich. I wish I was a millionaire. Do you know that the millionaires also owe millions? Right. You know, we say that, you know, I owe thousands of all because you're not a millionaire, you're a thousandaire. <laughs> so, 
So peace doesn't come when we have a lot of money. Matter of fact, a lot of people don't have peace because they have so much money. They don't know what to do with them. Or sometimes, you know, they're so afraid that somebody will rob them. They cannot sleep. <laughs> then they go to the doctor to find peace. <laughs> or if I could only move to this place, I will have peace. You know, as a, as a, you know like I tell you, I like to watch documentaries. I watch uh, how people travel just to get to America. You know, there are people from Africa, from Asia, they will try, they will fly to Colombia, and from Colombia, they will march way up to America. And they have to go through different kinds of dangers and jungles. Just, they said, well, in America, there's peace. Because they said, in my, in my place, there's no, ple uh, there's no peace, there's war, and there's no money. So they will come to America. <laughs> and then when they get to America, they will have no peace because Trump is going to arrest them, right? <laughs> so now they're heading towards Canada. So peace cannot be achieved in the things of this world, but it can be achieved only to Christ himself. Trust God. Whatever problems that you have, if you want to have peace, bring it to God. Trust in him. Do not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me, Jesus said. And remember this. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you that peace. Get on your knees. Bring everything to God for prayer and supplication. Bring everything to God and the peace of God that surpasses understanding, that is beyond our comprehension. I mean, this peace will drive you crazy because you do not know how deep it is. It's just so deep. You have, you have no trouble when you, have, when you trust God. So that's why Jesus said, my peace I live with you. My peace I give with you. That's the kind of peace that we have in Christ. Not a temporary peace, but it's a true peace. Because again, peace is not just a condition of the mind, but it's a condition of the heart. It is an issue of the heart that only God knows. Nobody else knows your heart, but God himself knows you from the inside out. And he can give you that peace that is beyond understanding. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we thank you.